Hello, my name is Jeff Kersey, and in this lesson I'm going to show you how to take a scene from a photograph that looks quite complicated, but there are ways to simplify it and make it into a painting. This is a scene of a, of a beautiful autumn lane just up the road from where I live in the Peak District. It's the sort of place that you're walking along the lane and it's crying out to be painted. And I'm going to show you how you can take that and break it down into basic shapes and rich colours and tones and create an impression of that scene that's full of life and atmosphere. So I'm going to mix a nice bright colour for the sky and I'm going to make a sort of purple colour by taking some cobalt blue and rose madder. Quite thin, just a thin wash to drop into the background. And I'm going to take a wash of lemon yellow next. This is like painting with sunlight, lemon yellow. There's a real splash of bright yellow in the centre of this scene. The next colour is that rich autumn orange. And I don't use a tube of orange paint. I use a formula that always gives me a nice bright glow. And that's Oriolin to give me a rich transparent yellow and then a touch of burnt sienna in that which turns it into a, a bright orange glow. Now the next colour is, is green. So I'm mixing a green with Oriolin and cobalt blue. A really nice formula for mixing greens. Now I want an even stronger red now, an even richer red. So I'm going to take just a bit of burnt sienna on its own. No other colour with that, just a drop of water. There's an area behind the wall that's in quite strong shadow and I'm going to mix a rich chocolatey brown colour with burnt sienna and cobalt blue. Now this doesn't want as much water with it as the other colours because it's a richer, deeper tone. And I'm going to try and keep that sort of warm glow in the picture right the way through by adding a bit of rose madder to that to keep with that sort of hint of purple. And then the last colour is another dark one. At the left of this scene there's some holly and ivy bushes so it's a really rich dark green. And I'm going to start this one with viridian. Uh, but I'm going to add some ultramarine blue to it. Now that changes the emerald green into a so sort of rich turquoise. It's not quite right yet, it's still a little bit overpowering. But if you add burnt sienna, the red in the burnt sienna, because it's the opposite to green, it serves to calm it down and give us a rich dark browny green. Okay now we're ready to go now, we've got all the colours mixed, so I'm going to wet the background. I'm coming right down to that area behind the dry stone wall. And where the road goes out of the picture around the bend. Now just to make sure I'm a bit more accurate with that uh, wet background, I'm taking a number 10 brush and I'm just making sure the water comes right down to the top of that dry stone wall and to where the background foliage meets the road there as it just goes around the bend and out of the picture. Then straight away I'm charging up the same brush with the cobalt blue and rose madder and we'll just lay some of that in using the side of the brush so that I just skim across the surface just starting with a nice mild purple colour to represent the sky. Okay, clean the brush. Next one is that nice rich lemon yellow, that bright yellow, more or less in the centre of the scene. Work, got to work rapidly on this stage. When you're painting wet in wet, you have to work quite rapidly so that you take advantage of the wet surface of the paper. It soon does start to dry. The next one is the orange, that rich orange colour. And I'm just, I'm almost looking at this photograph through half closed eyes to sort of give me the basic impression of the shapes. I don't want to start picking out detail at this early stage. It's just a case of getting the basics down on paper. More of that rich orange colour. Now a bit of the deeper red colour. I'm getting a brush full of that mixture of burnt sienna which is quite a bit redder. Bring that down at the top of the wall. A little bit in the left hand side as well. As we can see now there's less and less of the sky on view as I work in all these rich autumn tones. I think a touch more of that lemon yellow to emphasise the brightness in that area there in the middle of the picture. Now that's all the light bright colours in position. It's now time to look at these rich dark tones. 
There's an area behind the wall, for instance, where there isn't much light getting through to the foliage. So this is where that we introduce this rich dark brown. This is the mixture of cobalt blue, burnt sienna and rose madder. Again, using the side of the brush to just get those simple shapes in. A bit more of that over at the right hand side as well. Then a touch of that green, just a hint of green amongst the yellow in that part of it and over at this right hand side as well. And then the rich dark green, still working with this number 10 brush where we've got holly and ivy growing at this left hand side. I'm going to work some of that in. Still taking advantage of the damp surface of the paper. It's drying all the time but it's still wet enough for me to work these loose washes in. To balance the picture, let's put a little touch of that across at the right hand side as well. And I'm just going to take a clean brush now, a smaller brush. This is a number six brush. A bit of lemon yellow on it and try and disguise these few splashes that I've made by picking out a little bit of foliage with the lemon yellow and a little bit of foliage with the Oriolin and Burnt Sienna. Just maybe to suggest the ends of the branches and twigs. These are having more and more impact now because the marks are staying put a lot more now that the background has started to dry. Touch more lemon yellow into this area. I'm using the lemon yellow now quite thick. It's almost neat out of the tube. It almost creates a nice bright green on the paper. And then just a bit more of the orange colour. This is the, this is going back to that Oriolin and Burnt Sienna. Just suggesting foliage. We explain this even further in the next stage by painting some branches and twigs up amongst these shapes. Now that's that first stage completed. You can see that I'm really painting furiously to take advantage of the wet in wet wash, the wet in wet background. It's now time to leave that to dry.